everybody this morning. As I said, uh, my family and I were very thankful for our vacation last week. And, um, you know, uh, I tell you, the devil, he just gets involved in stuff. Last week we uh, had made a decision. They, they have a, a service there at the campground where we were staying. They have a church service. And we had talked about going to the church service, but my daughter was with us. And uh, she said, well, listen, um, my church broadcast online. And so we can just turn on the computer and we can watch the service. We can be part of my church uh, right here. So we want to do that. So we had Wi-Fi signal and all that stuff, you know, set up. So we can get online and, and listen to her service the next day. So we made that decision. Next morning we got all ready to, to listen to everything. And that Wi-Fi would come up and stay up about 30 seconds and go off. And it would not come up for anything. And of course we'd already missed the service at the campground because we were planning on watching that service. And it, we never could all day long. We tried to get that signal to come up different times because uh, that broadcast can be watched multiple times during the day. But no time were we able to, uh, to get that signal to come up. So I threatened and I told them, well, we couldn't get church to come on this morning, so I'm just going to have to preach to y'all. Um, we decided not to do that, but um, uh, we did have some time together. But, you know, sometimes everything you try, uh, it just doesn't work out. But we know that we love our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and uh, we enjoy the time. But I am so glad to be back with you. So we're continuing this week the Bible Story Summer. So this week I am going to be um, telling you about the Bible story. This Bible story, I guess, uh, is entitled uh, Healing the Sick Servant uh, or Miracles is what I called it. Uh, and I want to tell you there was, you know, Jesus had gone through all kinds of things and he had been over to uh, um, the Gerasenes and he had uh, cast out the, the evil spirits into the, the swine and he had finally he had come back and he, as he came into Capernaum, there was a crowd there waiting for him. And this crowd that was there, there were all these people that were around waiting for Jesus. They wanted to see Him. They wanted to talk to Him. And as He began to make His way in through this crowd, there was a synagogue official that came. And this synagogue official that, uh, that came to Him, um, I'm sorry, not a synagogue official, but a centurion that came to Him. And, and this centurion that came to Him said, um, Lord, I have a servant. A servant that is very ill. This servant has been a good servant to me, and the servant is, is very ill. He's not doing well. And so I, I, I want you to heal him. And so immediately when this centurion came, this Roman soldier, when he came, and Jesus heard him say this, Jesus put in his heart to go. And so he began to go toward the centurion's house. But the centurion said, Lord, I am not worthy for you to come to my house. I'm not worthy for you to even come to my house. Listen, I want you to heal my servant, but I'm not worthy for you to come to my house. You are way too good to come to my house. But I understand something about you. You see, I am a man that commands many people. And I can say to this one, do this, and it is done. And I can say to that one, do this, and it is done. I can simply command things to be done, and I know that they will happen simply because I commanded them to be done. But I understand your authority, and so I say all you have to do is command it to be done, and I know that my servant will be healed. Jesus looked at this centurion, and he said, I have found no faith like this in all of Israel. Now, the centurion was not a Jew. Jesus looked at him and he said, This faith that this man has, I have found like no other in all of the territory. There's no one with this kind of faith. And in fact, because of his faith, his servant was healed. But Jesus went on. He didn't stop there. Even after he healed the servant, that very moment he healed that servant without ever going and seeing him. He simply healed him through his commands. But he didn't stop there. He turned and he talked about the faith of this centurion. And he said, listen, this centurion's faith is greater than any in all of Israel. And he said, there will be those who come from the east and the west and dine at the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They will be there and they will be those that are the sons that will be cast out into the outer darkness. 
or there will be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Jesus said this among the Jews. He told them that there would be those who would come from all over and they would dine at the table at the feast, but that these would be cast in outer darkness. There were those that were around that would be cast in outer darkness. Now, as we look at this, this story, every time I read this story about this servant being healed, I get excited because I see a few things and I'm going to break it down for you. We're going to read through the scripture in Matthew 8 in just a moment. I'm going to break it down for you. But the thing that I get excited about is this is a non-Jew. This is a Roman. This is a, a, a Roman soldier. A Gentile. A non-Jew. And with all the celebrations going on, all of these Jews all around Jesus, all of the things that are going on, and what happens? Here comes this Roman soldier that comes to Jesus in a moment. All of that is happening and ask for his servant to be healed. That's absolutely incredible to me that he would even have the desire to go to Jesus. But he did. And so we're going to break that down and talk about it this way. Father God, we come to you this morning and we thank you for the fact that God, you're you are so powerful. You are so mighty. Father, we pray that as you, as you speak to us today through your word, that God, we get a sense of how incredible you are. <coughs> Father, the authority that you have, you've given to Jesus, Father, when Jesus walked on this earth, he simply commanded that someone be healed, and they were. He didn't even have to touch them. He didn't even have to enter into their presence. Father, the fate of this centurion is, is so remarkable. Father, it's absolutely remarkable that this man would have that kind of faith when those even that were among the Jews did not have the faith that he had. Father, I pray that today as we go through this story, Father, and we see what we see, that you would open our eyes and help us to understand the faith the kind of faith that this soldier had can only come through you. Can only come through you. You're the only one that can give us that kind of faith. Father, the trust that we have in you. Father, today I thank you for being the God, the one, the only God. And Father, the fact that you love us so much that you sent your son to die for us, to be buried and resurrected on the third day. God, thank you. For our salvation. Father, we ask it in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Alright. So, um, Jesus in Matthew chapter 8, beginning in verse 5, it talks about Jesus entering the Um uh, And the centurion came to him, imploring him, and saying, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, fearfully tormented. Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion said, Lord, I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof. But just say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. Now when Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who were following, Truly I say to you, I have not found such great faith with anyone in Israel. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and recline at the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said to the centurion, Go, it shall be done for you as you have believed. And the servant was healed in that very moment. In that very moment. So as we look at this, and we look at these verses, we begin with this fact. The centurion was a Roman soldier. Probably a high-ranking Roman soldier. He was placed there to make sure that the Jews obeyed the laws, that they did what they were told. You understand that the Jews and the Romans were not friends. They didn't get along very well. The Roman government had taken control and they were in control. And they made sure they stayed in control by placing these centurions within the cities, within the groups of people. And here, this Roman soldier who absolutely uh, does not get along with the Jews. Here he is. He comes to Jesus. 
It's amazing as we look at this and we understand that this Gentile, this man, he came to Jesus. Luke chapter 7 tells the story of slightly differently, and it tells us that the Jews were friendly with this centurion. They said that he was a friend of the Jews, and in fact, he helped them get a synagogue built right there in the city. That this centurion absolutely had grasped this culture. He had some idea about what was going on. But you know, even the Jews themselves, most of the Jews did not believe in Jesus Christ. They did not believe he was who he said he was. They didn't believe. They were, they were coming to see, but they didn't necessarily believe. But this Roman soldier who had been in this culture, even though he was supposed to be against them, he was supposed to keep the oppression on them, he came to a place where he understood. We know that he had the faith in Jesus because he would not have come to him in the first place asking for that. A Roman soldier would not have come to a Jew and asked for anything. He would have told them what he wanted. He would have demanded that they do whatever it was. He would not have come asking for something to be done. He would not have had that kind of faith. But he had that faith. He understood and somehow in all of the things that he'd seen going on, he was able to comprehend and to come to a faith believing that Jesus could do exactly what he was asking. That Jesus could not only heal the servant, but that Jesus could heal that servant simply by speaking. That kind of faith is incredible. Jesus said there was no one in all of Jerusalem, there was no one in all of Israel that had that kind of faith. You understand, we're talking about a Gentile. We're talking about someone who should not have that kind of faith, but he did. He had so much faith that he would not even ask Jesus to come to his house, but he said simply, you speak and it'll be done. I believe that. Listen, today we have people that do not have that kind of faith in Jesus Christ, even though they know him as Lord and Savior. We have people that have given their lives to Christ, yet still do not have enough faith to believe that God will do what He said He would, that He will take care of you. We have people that do not hold to that kind of faith. Listen, if you believe in Jesus Christ and you have given your life to Him, then there was a point in time in your life where you trusted Him and you had faith in Him to give your life to Him in the first place. But unfortunately, so many people today will take that back and try to live their life on their own because they lack faith in God. Oh, I'm not going to Jesus with this because I, I, it's just, it's, I got to handle it myself. Uh, I, I know that, that He will do things for me, but you know, I messed this up, I'll just take care of it. I'll try to do it. You know, I, I know that I need, our, our church needs to, to do this or do that, but you know, we, we'll just, we'll get some people together and talk about it and figure it out. We, we don't spend that time in prayer. We don't have the faith to believe that if we spend the time in prayer, that God will answer and He will do exactly what needs to be done. There's so many that we lack this kind of faith, even those who have been around Jesus. Listen, His disciples that were around Jesus were included in that group that Jesus said, do not have this kind of faith. The disciples who have been with Him through all of that time, even this Roman centurion had greater faith than they had. And they had been with Him. Listen, faith is something that we, uh, I, I talked to the students this morning, and I talked about we believe in those things that are unseen. We have the conviction to believe in that. We can't see Jesus. We can't touch Him. We can't put our hands on Him like they could. But the centurion, having not known Jesus, we, we don't get any sense of him ever speaking to Jesus before, came to him and in that moment had more faith than even his disciples had. We have to trust. We have to believe. We have to do that. And as we do that, then Jesus answers. He answered. He healed the servant. And, and, and uh, this story, this Roman soldier cared for the Jews, evidently, and he believed some of the things that he had heard, or and he must have believed all of the things that he had heard about Jesus as far as who he was. 
And so he went to Jesus, but he went to Jesus not for himself, but for someone else. Did you follow that? This centurion had so much faith that it wasn't even for himself that he was going. This was for his servant. His servant. He cared so much about the servant that he went to Jesus and he had enough faith to believe that his servant would even be healed because of his faith. He went to him and his servant was healed. That kind of faith, listen, today, if we have that kind of faith, if we truly live that kind of faith, listen, this world would not continue to go in the direction it's going. If we have the kind of faith to believe that if we go on others' behalf to Jesus and we have the faith that He will heal them, He will heal them. If we have the faith to believe that He will change the lives, He will. Listen, we go and He does. He does it how He wants to. Now, please understand, I'm not telling you that you can go to Jesus and if you have enough faith that a person will be saved from death. If you have enough faith, a person will um, change their life in a certain way or do a certain thing. What I'm telling you is if you have enough faith, God will touch those lives and He will appoint unto them exactly what needs to be done. He will open their eyes. He will use them in a way that they need to be used. We don't ever know the outcome. And I don't want anyone to ever think that if I just had more faith, that loved one would not have passed away. Listen, you have the faith to trust God that you trust Him in whatever the outcome is. But we've got to have that faith to trust Him in the first place. Yeah. And to give it all to Him. To pour ourselves out to Him. This Roman soldier came to Him. He had the faith and he told Jesus what was going on. And he told Him about the faith that he had. And Jesus healed his servant. That faith is so incredible. And it's so important for us to understand that. Jesus was moved by this. He was willing to go and heal the servant, but he didn't even have to go. The servant was healed because of the faith of the centurion, because he reached out to him simply by giving the authority. He understood, this Roman centurion understood the authority that Jesus had. The authority that Jesus had. Now listen to me. I think that that's one of the reasons why we lack faith today. We don't understand the authority that Jesus has. God gave unto His Son, Jesus Christ, all authority over mankind. He gave all authority unto Him. He, he, not only did He give authority over man, He gave authority over nature. Jesus spoke and the waves stopped. The waves, the storm that was doing all kinds of crazy, amazing things. Jesus simply spoke and the waves became His glass. He has all authority. Why don't we trust Him? Why don't we put our faith in Him? Why don't we put our faith in Him instead of putting it in government? Why don't we put our faith in Him instead of putting it in people? Why don't we put our faith in Him instead of putting it in ourselves? Listen, that Roman centurion, he had enough authority. He could have found the best doctors around and brought them back to that servant. But he didn't go to the doctors, he went to Jesus. He went to Jesus and because of that faith, Jesus healed him. This Gentile displayed a faith that was so deep and incredible that even Jesus was moved and he proclaimed that there had been no faith found like this in all of Israel. But Jesus went on to make a proclamation about eternity. You see, I fear that sometimes that's where our faith is lacking. We lack a faith in Jesus in eternity. You say, what are you, what are you talking about, preacher? Listen. As Jesus spoke about the faith of this centurion, He said there would be those that come from the east and the west, those that come from all around. In other words, Jesus was saying, not only the Jews will be saved. Those who come from all different directions will be reclining at the table with, with uh, Isaac and Jacob and Abraham. They will be there at the table in heaven. 
Not only the Jews. And some of those of you that are here that are Jews, he said, who believe you are the sons of the kingdom, you will be cast into the outer darkness. You cannot get into heaven on the coattails of your forefathers. The Jews believed they were sons of Abraham. Therefore, they were going to heaven. They had that right just simply because they were a Jew. But Jesus told us here, they do not. There will be those among the sons of the kingdom who will be cast into the outer darkness where there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. They will be cast out. They cannot get into heaven based on their heritage. Now, so what do I mean about that faith? Listen, in a congregation the size that we have today, being in the South, more than likely there are those of us that are here today that were going to church before you were born. You were going to church even before you were born. You were raised in church. There was not a Sunday that you were that you were not expected to be in church. You have been here your whole life. It's what you've always done. You know all about it, head knowledge. You've heard everything there is to hear. And at some point, maybe there was a, an opportunity for you to go down and, and see the preacher. You went down and said, I want to be saved. He said, great, let's pray. We're going to baptize you and, and everything's wonderful. problem is that for many of you who have done that, you didn't have the faith to give your life to Christ. You never gave your life to Christ. You simply followed a plan or a procedure. It was expected of you. You were in a family in which there were Christians. They expected you to act that way. They expected you to do that. When the call was given and you were of the right age, of course you were supposed to go down. You were expected to do that. And for many people, they did not even knowing what they were doing. And unfortunately, there were many times when it was never questioned. They never were questioned to find out if in fact they were making a decision to follow Christ truly or they simply were coming down front because the preacher said so. So they got baptized and they trusted that time in their life when in fact they never had the faith to follow Jesus in the first place. But we've been in church all of our life. We know we've read the Bible through 20 times. We know all the things about this. And yes, you know it with a head knowledge. But do you have the faith that has to go with that? Have you acted on that faith? Has there ever been a time in your life where you realized you were a sinner in need of a Savior? Has there ever been that time in your life? Well, you know, I, I, I never really did bad things. You know, I mean, I, I grew up in church and, and, and my mom and dad taught me right from wrong and, and, and I knew if I messed up, my mama was going to uh, whip me. So I, I, didn't, I didn't mess up. I didn't do those bad things. So I never really went through that. But yeah, when I was 10 years old, I went and asked the preacher, told him I want to be saved. I got baptized. Did you ever go through a time where you realized you were a sinner in need of a Savior? And you had enough faith to trust that Jesus was that Savior. Was there ever that time? Listen, we cannot count on heritage. We cannot count on the fact that we've been in church. We cannot count on the fact that we have read the Bible through. We cannot count on the fact that we've given money to the church. When none of those things count. That's not what matters in the end of things. Those are things we do because of the faith we have in Jesus, because our lives have changed, because we've given ourselves to Him, not so that we would go to Him. So the question today is, are you one of those sons of the kingdom that He was talking about, so to speak, that is going to find yourself in the outer darkness because you never gave your life to Christ? Because you trusted in the fact that you were raised in church. Because you trusted in the fact that you knew what the preacher was talking about. And you never really did anything bad because you heard what the preacher said and you know that if you did something bad, God was going to strike you down with a lightning bolt so you didn't ever do anything bad. So since you never really did anything that bad, of course you, you understand that you accepted Jesus Christ at some point. You did that. Yeah, that's what I did. I, I went up and saw the preacher. I got baptized. I know I'm okay. There are people 
all over this world who are trusting in a baptism and not a conversion. In a congregation this size, there are likely people here today that if you ask them, are they a Christian, they will tell you yes. If you ask them, have they ever been saved, they will say, yes, I'm saved. If you ask them about a time when they ever came upon a realization that they were a sinner needing salvation, they don't recall that. You know, I, I, don't, I don't remember. Well, what do you remember about your salvation? Well, um, you know, Mama said when I was this age, I, I went up front and, and talked to the preacher and I got baptized. So, you know, I got saved. <coughs> well, friends, listen to me. You can't trust in what Mama said. You can't trust in what somebody else said. What do you know about your salvation? Each one has to own their own salvation. Each person has to have the faith to trust in Jesus Christ. And they have to give Him their life. What do you know about that? About your own salvation? Have you done that? Well, I, I think I did. You think you did. You're resting your eternity on I think I did. I talk to people who tell me when I was this age, I accepted Christ and I was baptized. And I say, do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that today you're going to heaven if you die today, that you will wake up with your eyes in heaven? Well, yeah, I hope I will. You hope? Listen, that word hope in that sentence is, it's an empty wish. The hope is in Jesus, not a wish. Amen. Do you hope in Jesus Christ? Or do you just wish that you would? I, I think maybe I will because, you know, I've been a good person and I've done all these things and I've spent my whole life in church. Listen. There's only one thing. There's only one thing that will get you in there. And Scripture says if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe that God raised Him from the dead, you shall be saved. Yes. If you confess Him as Lord, that means if you gave your life to Him, if there came a time when you realized you were a sinner in need of a Savior and you gave your life to Him, you know that. Scripture tells us you can know you're going to heaven. You don't have to hope. You don't have to think. You don't have to wish. Do you know Listen, today, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to you today and I understand that I am talking to a congregation of predominantly seniors. I'm talking to a congregation that most of you have read the Bible through more times than I have. I'm talking to a congregation of people who have been in church longer than I have. I'm talking to people that know their Bible. But I also know that I'm talking to a group of people that in amongst this group of people, there might very well be someone who never gave their life to Christ. And if that's you and you're sitting here today and you're saying, you know, he's talking about me. I know he's talking about me. And I, and I know he's right, but I can't get up now. Listen, I've served as a deacon in church. I've been a Sunday school teacher for years. I've sang in the choir for crying out loud. I can't walk up in front of those people and say, I don't know Jesus Christ. These people that are around you today, I don't care who you are. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and you come today and you give your life to Him, they will celebrate. <coughs> there will not be shame. It will be a celebration. But even if there were, would you rather be approved by people and disapproved by God? Come on, man. Come on. Or would you rather be approved by God and disproved by people? We are not promised another moment. We're not promised another breath. Do you get that? We're not promised another breath. And if you're sitting here today and you hope you're going to wake up in heaven, listen, you can't sit here and hope. You need to do something about it. 
If you're not absolutely certain that tomorrow, if you die, that you will wake up in heaven, you need to do something about that. Listen, Scripture tells us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin are death. That's an eternal separation from God and the devil's hell. That's what sin will get us unless we have forgiveness. It says the wages of sin are death, but the free gift of God is eternal life yeah. through Jesus Christ our Lord. So today I'm coming to you with this plea. And that's what it is, a plea. This Roman centurion came to Jesus with a plea. Save my servant. He is dying. I cannot save him. There's nothing I can personally do to save his life, but I know you can. And I'm coming to you with a plea to save my servant. And Jesus said that his faith had healed his servant. I'm coming to you today with a plea. And this plea is, if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, don't wait another day. Don't wait another moment. But I'm just a teenager and I have all my life to live. So at some point, you know, I'll probably make that decision. Listen, you don't know if you have all your life to live. All your life may already be gone. Tomorrow may be your time to call home to God. And if you don't know Him, then that's not where you're going. You may be sitting here thinking, well, I'm 80 years old, and I've lived my whole life and tried to live in a way that is pleasing and, and do the right things, and so I know God's going to let me in. Listen, if you never made that decision for Him, you never gave Him your life, no matter what you've done in this life, he is not going to let you in. There's only one answer. Have you given your life to Him? Do you know without a doubt that He is your Savior? And I come to you today saying this. Don't wait another moment. If you are not certain that you know Him, please come talk to me. And I will help you walk through the Scriptures and find out. If you know absolutely that you're lost, and you know you're a sinner in need of a Savior. Today come, I will show you how to accept Him. If you are saved and you know that you're saved and that you will wake up in heaven when you die, but there are those in your life that you're not sure about. There are those in your life that you know are lost. And I, I, I again, but I plead to you, bring those people to the altar today. Bring those names to the altar. Lay them at the feet of Jesus and ask for their healing. Have the faith to do that and leave the results to Him. I pray that you will do that. In just a moment, we're going to have a time of invitation. During that time, if you need to respond in any way, whether it be to come to the altar and pray, whether it be to come to me and, and talk to me about your salvation, whether you need to become a member of this church, whether you need to or bring someone to the altar and resolve, uh, uh, resolve a conflict, whatever it is that you need to do, then I encourage you, please come and do that.